Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to all the new people that showed up. Please, everybody, give them a warm welcome. I don't know where all the new people came from, but we welcome you with open arms. We have a great, great group of subscribers here. And we don't have moderators on this channel. It's self-moderation. Uh, if you do have a problem with someone, just send me an email. Send it to me. I'll review the chat, and I'll handle situations after the show. But... Um, Welcome, welcome everyone. Now today, let's get into the show. Now, uh, each day that goes by, I'm like, there's nothing that would surprise me anymore. And then lo and behold, the next day, something else surprises me. One of you found a 1940 comic where Batman and Boy Wonder go to the World's Fair to defeat a villain who has a weapon that turns steel into dust. Now, why is this significant? Well, we found a pair of buildings. Let me pull that up here. That seem to resemble Batman versus Superman. Here is the IBM building, the Superman building. And here is the Batman building, which is Trump Tower. This building here for Superman is the IBM building. And we've covered this at length, but there's a couple of new bits of information that we found here. Now, we know that Trump has admitted his links to the World's Fair through the globe perisphere that is in front of Trump International Hotel. And we know that his family the Trump family had a billboard at the 1939 World's Fair. Now there's something weird because this comic, this 96 page comic is what we're going to be breaking down today. I've got the whole thing right here, page by page. And we're going to go through it to try and solve this mystery of how long these people knew that they would turn steel into dust. Now, some of these pages are so specific that it's creepy. Like some kind of time warp. Now, here's what else seems to link this comic into an event that had not happened yet. An event that would happen in 2001, which was the Hebrew year 61. In the Hebrew calendar, 2001 was the Hebrew year 5761. The comet came out 61 years before that, in 1940. Is this an accident? I don't believe it is. And you'll see that when we get into this comic and you hear them describe the technology. Tesla technology. That is used by the villain in this comic to turn steel into dust. And they literally say it over and over again. Now. The Batman Robin story is on the last 10 pages of this comic. And we're going to look at that a little bit later in the show. But I found another comic inside of this book. About something else really, really weird. And it starts on page 14. Let's get into that right now. Crazy. Crazy, 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 you guys. Alright, so let's go to page 14. And get into this comic here. Now, what you're going to hear them talk about here, and I'll zoom this up so you can read this with me, is poisoning the water supply and injecting cows with a needle. Now, this is important because we just disclosed on previous shows that this 1939 World's Fair was a hypodermic needle ritual in preparation for the worldwide polio vaccination campaign. Now, why could we say that? Well, because there was the Trilon and Perisphere, which are the two objects you see behind Batman and Superman and, and uh, Robin here on the cover of this comic. And they're going to the World's Fair. And we discovered that the Trilon is actually the real name of a hypodermic needle. It's a glass hypodermic needle. It's called a trilon. 
And we discover that this perisphere, which is the globe, remember this is in front of Trump Tower, a replica of it is in front of Trump, Trump Tower, and he admits it, not Trump Tower, I'm sorry, it's in front of Trump International Hotel. And we thought that this perisphere probably represents either a bolus of the needle or it could represent the womb. So you have a needle piercing the womb, and that's what's really going on here. And this is why Trump, who is the father of the vaccines, he calls himself, grew up right here in Queens, Corona Park, where this World's Fair is. And why his family had a prescription billboard at the 1939 World's Fair. The name Trump was stylized with the R having an X attached to it. RX. Now, let's get back into this comic. Because they talk about the water supply and cattle being injected with poison. It says here, Sergeant Dugan, there's been a suspicious epidemic of sickness at one of our training camps. I understand, sir. I'll take care of it. By the way, Dugan, if you need any assistance, I'm glad you brought that up, sir. I would like to have my regular teammates, Whitey Smith and Bluey, Blue, on the case. If I can tear them away from New York's World Fair long enough. A few hours later, Brad is talking with one of the camp cooks. Now, I don't think it's the water that's making men sick, Sergeant. Let me show you something. Look at that side of beef left over from yesterday. Side of beef? Looks like a statue of green death. What's the statue of green death? Well, that has to be the Statue of Liberty. Oxidized copper turns green. Let's keep reading here. Where does the camp get this meat? Tapley Meat Packing Company, Sergeant, in the town of Tapley. We want to talk with Mr. Tapley. Hey, Red. In the office of uh, Mr. Tapley, president of the packing concern, you may inspect my plant, gentlemen. We take every precaution to guarantee the purity of our meat. We'll have to judge that for ourselves, Mr. Tapley. So they're investigating this guy. Let's go to the next page here. Then they go, they expect, inspect the meat packing plant. They don't find anything. Then the guys drive off. These guys cut down a telephone pole. Another copper connection, right? So they can disrupt communications. They pull it down. And then they get on a train. After a fight ensues, let's keep going here. It was a near thing that time. A crazy sailor nearly nabbed me. I told you it wasn't safe to monkey with the army. Oh yes, it is safe. Just shift the scene of action. How about injecting that poison into the cattle before they get to the Tapley plant? So these guys are sabotaging the cattle by injecting them with poison. Good scheme, Guile. We'll hop over to the railroad line and slid the needle into the cows. Right on the cattle cars. We are the cattle, you guys. So remember, this is in a comic that is about a needle in the World's Fair Trilon needle. And here's the comic. That night, as number 97 pulls slowly into the long grade, about 10 miles outside of town of Tapley, I don't see why you insisted on me coming along. If one of us takes a chance, we all do. And that means you, Guile. Let's go on to the next page here. We made it, all right. Let's get to work. Pee-wee, crack that first door open with the crowbar. Right, boss. That's it. That ought to fix you up, baby. Nobody wise to us yet. And there he is, injecting the cow with a needle. Now, this goes on. There's more stuff to this. But that's the first story I saw in this 96-page comic book. So then, let's get into the meat 
of this comic character in this next comic story. Get into the meat, right? Pun intended, I guess. Batman with Robin, the boy wonder. Wealth, lust for power. These are the roots of evil that tend to plant themselves in man's heart and mind. I just got chills. Because what have we been saying? The love of money is the root of all evil. How is it that 80-70% of Christians are deceived by a man who loves money? It makes absolutely no sense to me. Let's keep reading here. Crime, havoc, and destruction. These are the fruits. Once again, it remains for the Batman and Robin. Now, if you're new to the channel, understand we don't live in the right-left paradigm. Because Some people are like, oh, I guess you want Biden then. No, absolutely not. All of these people are corrupt at the top. They're all corrupt. But it's Trump who's de deceived the most Christians. Which is why we're on the trail. And he will be a factor moving forward. He'll probably become the next president. The boy wondered to pit their amazing skills against one who would become king of crime. A king of evil. This is the man who turns steel into dust. Among those walking the vast grounds of the World's Fair are Bruce Wayne and young Dick Grayson, who are in reality Batman and Robin, the Boy Wonder. So they're walking into the World's Fair. This is the opening of the page 85, which is 58 backwards, of this comic. Written by Bob Kane. So I'm wondering if the character Bane came out of Bob Kane's name, which is likely. Here they are walking in. Wow, I heard it was big, but I didn't think it was this big, says Robin. Batman says, big is a mild word. It's stupendous. Look over there. It's the Trilon and Perisphere. Say, let's go inside the Perisphere and see the city of tomorrow now before we proceed on let's go back to Batman and Superman buildings and I told you that we would find Robin in this landscape because Robin pairs with Batman remember that look at this but before we get into that let me draw in the S because I found the S on the Superman building. Because it can't be a Superman without the S logo, right? Let's draw it in. Find the freehand. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's find this here. Let's draw it in. Let's zoom on this. You guys see the S yet on the Superman? I see it. It's right here. There's the yes. See it? It's backwards. It's in a mirror. But there is the S. Actually, it's not backwards. Gosh, it feels like it's backwards, right? No, it's it's right. It's correct. Starting to see everything in reverse now from looking at things in reverse for so long. But there is the S on the chest of the bat of the uh, Superman building the IBM building so where is Robin now follow me through this study here because I think we figured out where Robin is this is the Robin character from the Batman and Robin universe as you can see here and there were lots of characters named Robin you just heard him say Dick Grayson was one of them, but there were others as well. And I looked at the first three characters, names, who represented Robin. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. It says it right here. Dick, Jason, and Tim were the first three in that order of Robin. Each person playing the Robin character. I want you to take the first letter of each of these names and you tell me what that acronym 
represents? What person could this acronym stand for? Let's go back into the chat. Now, if you're new to the channel, we do interactive a lot of the times because it helps reinforce that I'm not just making all this up. That you guys see it too. So, let's see who gets it first. Let that catch up. The chat takes a minute to catch up. Okay, so you guys got it. Obviously, it's Donald J. Trump, right? DJT, the famous three acronyms. Everybody knows it. Now, there's another character who plays Robin as well. And his name, after the J and T, was Damien. Now, this is Damien. And Damien, of course, means devil. And, of course, Robin, as the Damien character, is a very dark character, as you can see on your screen here. That's a very dark-looking Robin, and here's why Robin looks dark as the Damien character. Because his name me is also means Damien al Ghul, like a ghoul, demon. And, in fact, this Robin is the son of Batman. So, what could Robin really represent? Why isn't there a building in the landscape for Robin when we look at the Batman Trump Tower? Where's Robin? Is the question. And here is what I think the answer is. I believe that Robin is Batman's intellect or Trump's intellect first we had the first presidency a light cheerful Robin right and then the second presidency we will get the Damien Robin of Trump's intellect so there is no Robin building because it's in Trump's head Wow now when you look down here in the description of who Robin is and where this character originated in the comic universe, they explain here that Robin came out of basically the whole Robin Hood meme, which was stealing from the rich to give to the poor. This is where they came up with his background. And the weird thing is, is that isn't that exactly what Trump claims to want to do? Right? Stole from the rich and give to the poor. Remember Trump's for the people speech? Well, he seems to be channeling the sentiment. And I know a lot of other presidents do this. But Trump was the first president to hand out $3,000 to every single man, woman, and child in America. Wasn't he? But look at the result of it. Hyperinflation. $6.6 .6 trillion. Most of that money went to the corporations. I think we got about 10% of it. As a people of the United States. Now. I had no idea. That this was true. But apparently. Batman was a time traveler. As well. See if we can find that in this Wikipedia article. So you guys can read along. With me. Because. Here it is. There is a certain point in which Robin takes Batman's place. He becomes Batman, further confirming that the two are one and the same. Now, why did Robin do this? Well, it says here, Grayson temporarily took over as Batman while Wayne was traveling through time. Wayne was time traveling. Using the aid of Damian Wayne, making his newish appearance as Robin. So, after Batman gave birth or, you know, conceived Damien, his son, with another lady. I can't remember who they said in here. But basically, at that point, Damien was able to double as Batman. To Gemini as Batman, as Batman went through time. Now, you're starting to see all of the synchronicities pointing right back to one person. Now, what other clues do we have that Trump is Batman? Well... His penthouse is in the 66th floor of his building. 
and there was a movie in 1966, the Batman film. So this 1966 movie becomes the Gemini counterpart of the 66th floor penthouse, which I just got done telling you yesterday. The 66th floor penthouse is like the Bat Cave, but it's above instead of below. Now, I'm about three quarters of the way through this movie. I already started decoding it this morning. And already, I found a Russian Melania Catwoman. Literally from Russia. Now, I know she's not from Russia. She's from Eastern Europe. But look at the trend of his wives. They're all from Eastern Europe. Which, of course, is full of Russian people. And the borders throughout history have moved back and forth through the different world wars. There's a penguin character that seems to channel Fau Fauci. Why? Because he basically sends a shark, which means Fauci or Jaws, to attack Batman on a ladder. And also, tomorrow, when we cover the 1966 Batman movie, you're going to hear in his own words, the Riddler say Trump's name. He says Trump. At about that point, I almost fell out of my bed capturing these screenshots. I almost wanted to cover it today, but we have a lot of other stuff to cover in this show today. Wow. Now, this Batman film released 46 days after Trump's 20th birthday. Of course, he was born in 1946. Here's the uh, calendar math on that. 46 days after his birthday, which of course is 9-11 upside down. One month and 16 days. Flip that whole thing around, you get 9-11. Now let's get back to this comic. Page 85. And finish out this decode. Here they go. Into... The Trilon and Perisphere into the needle and womb. And they go into the world of tomorrow, which is inside of the Perisphere globe. The city of tomorrow. Next page here. And lo and behold, two bridges turn into dust before their eyes. Inside the perisphere, the two stand upon the moving platform and look down upon Futurama. Looks almost real, doesn't it? The world of tomorrow, and we see today. We see it today. Once more, the outside of the grounds, both Dick and Bruce, seem very enthused. Gee, I can't get enough of this place. Come on, Bruce. Take it easy. We have a whole lot of day before us. There won't be anything to stop our having a good time. But Bruce speaks too soon, for at that very moment, a few miles away, it, it, it ain't possible, but it is. Look, the bridge is falling. It's melting. IX, IX, 1919, IXXI, 911. The bridge, the steel melts, it falls. You're going to hear them describe it as turning to dust here in a second here. The Great Western Bridge melts as if someone put it. A settling torch upon it. Batman and Robin get the news. And they decide it's time to get to work. Figure out what happened. The steel bridges don't melt every day in the week. This calls for an investigation. So, they call the commissioner to try to figure out what happened. But in, during this discussion with the commissioner, another bridge falls into dust. 
twin pairs of bridges fall into dust, melted away, crumpled into dust. I don't know how many times I have to say it. Then this guy from Travers of Travers, engineers. Of course, it's got to be an engineer, right? Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Trying to explain something's not right. We have a new bridge under construction. If it is destroyed, we'll lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. What should I do? So he's afraid that his bridge is going to get hit. And sure enough, as they go to inspect the bridge, try to prevent it from being destroyed. Robin gets in a fight with these people who he sees looks like they're trying to sabotage the bridge. Robin's fighting, Robin's fighting. Skip that part. And there goes the other bridge. I think he says, does he say monkey in here? I think he calls this guy a monkey or something. Love calling them monkeys. And that's the whole story. Do you think there's a connection, any connection with that and the wrecked bridge? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, we're just going to sit and wait for something to happen. Travers, look, the bridge is giving way. Bruce hasn't long to wait for two days later at the Travers Bridge location. I'm ruined. It's going just as that warning note said it would. Steel crumbling to dust. There I say it again. This was 1940, you guys. This has been a long thought out plan. The Twin Towers weren't even built yet. They didn't start building until 1968. So. Then we go to. The next page here. And they go to a third bridge. To make sure that it doesn't get sabotaged. And they. Batman gets in a fight, finds the guys, Robin's on the trail, and they identify that the bridges have been sabotaged with a device. A box. And here's where we get the Tesla technology, which I've been telling you guys over and over again. This was likely what was behind these buildings turning to dust. Page 92. Which is a 9 and a 1 and a 1, by the way. And this is gold. The men disposed of. The pair examined the curious box. The box-like affair left on the girder. When... Now, what do you suppose that is? He pulls his box out. Batman's holding the box. I wish I knew. Kind of sounds like an oscillator, doesn't it? I can tell you what it is, says the lady. Batman, that's the girl I was telling you about the other day. Who? You're the Batman, aren't you? I'm not afraid to tell you what I know. I live with my uncle, Dr. Hugo Vreekill. One of one day he called me to his laboratory. He seemed excited. Now we're going to get into who Dr. Vrikil is because I believe he is Dr. Vril of the Vril Society. We're going to open that Wikipedia page in a minute. But look at this. And at last I've done it. So Dr. Vrikil is talking to his niece. I have found a way to displace the atoms of steel. A way to displace the elements it is composed of. Let's keep reading here. Because it gets more specific. Then he pulls up what appears to be one of the twin towers. I mean, this is shocking. They hadn't even built them yet. With X's all over it. X marks the spot. Let's see what he has to say here. He quickly adjusted a dial on the machine. He called his sender. So he's, there's a, a sender and a receiver. Watch that block of steel and see what happens, he says. 
Before my very eyes, the steel block started to crumble like so much powder. Everybody was covered in powder that day. Why? What, what has happened to the steel block? It's melting. How? Ha! This new short wave I've discovered can decompose the elements that make up steel so that it is actually disintegrated. That box, my receiver, distributed the waves. Short waves cause disintegration. Now, the tech he uses has a sender and a receiver, which seems to match up with technology that Tesla talked about. This is the Tesla universe right here. He talks about a receiver and a transmitter. To receive wireless signals. Now, then Dr. Freekill starts bragging about how he's going to take over the world and use this technology to blackmail people. Suddenly a cold calculating look crept into my uncle's eyes. With my machine, I can become the most powerful man in the world. I can hold it as a club over those who deal in steel construction. He went on to explain how he would blackmail firms into paying protection money. Uncle, you mean you'll use this machine unless they pay you money? Exactly. Wealth is power and I shall be powerful. I shall become a king, a king of crime. More like the king of queens. He gathered criminals about him. He's gone money mad. I escaped the other day when I learned all his plans. His men are still looking for me. Quick, tell me, what does he intend to do next? So she's talking to a Batman and Robin there. Then, Vreekill uses this tech to break some prisoners out of jail so that he can create chaos. And many of you will remember all of the prisoners released under the Trump presidency and they said the states were doing it, but it still happened under his presidency. Criminals being let out of jail for the first time in history during the epidemic. And it's happening here in his comic book. Now, they get released. Batman comes to the rescue. Of course, Batman Trump comes to the rescue. What does he do? He drops poison gas capsules. I believe what this really represents is the vaccine. Because remember, they were in prison and they were basically, they, were, they had to take it, remember? They were kind of forced to take it. So here you got Batman enforcing the rule of law so he can look like the hero, which is exactly what happened. Then, Vreekill designs a plot to attack the building called the Monarch Building. See where that part is. Winging madly through the sky, the bat plane arrives over the Monarch Building in incredibly fast time, so they're trying to protect the building from Dr. Vreekill. So, they then corner Dr. Vreekill. They finally get a hold of him. It's just more fighting there. Getting to the end here, you guys. Hang in there. And what does Dr. Vreekill do? Which would be the appropriate ending for Dr. Tesla Prekill Vreekill. He thrusts his hand onto an open wire. And electrocutes himself. Grabbing a live wire. Now. Who is Dr. Vreekill? I believe he is really Dr. Vril. The Vril Society. Helena Blavatsky. The Atlantean race. 
Trump is vril. That's why he's got these superhuman, massive, seven, eight feet tall, you know, super service, secret service people. The master race, the magicians, they're called. Remember, we were on the trail of this. We're like, he's got to be a magician. Well, this is exactly how the Vril Society is described. The central character in this book is a traveler, which connotates time travel. Let's read some of the plot of this. The novel centers around a young, independent, unnamed, wealthy traveler who visits a friend, a mining engineer. They explore a natural chasm in a mine, which has been exposed by an exploratory shaft. The narrator reaches the bottom of the chasm safely, but the rope breaks and his friend is killed. The narrator finds his way into a subterranean world occupied by beings who seem to resemble angels. He befriends the first being he met who guides him around. The city that is reminiscent of ancient Egyptian architecture. Explorer meets his host wife. Two sons and daughter who learn to speak English by the way of a makeshift dictionary. During the narrator, during which the narrator unconsciously teaches them the language. The hero discovers that these beings who call themselves real Ya have great telepathic and other parapsychological abilities, such as the being able to transmit information, get rid of pain, and put others to sleep. Descendants, descendants of the Antevoluvian civilization. Now, this is a long plot there, but I think you get the drift that Dr. Vreekill is probably Dr. Vril in, in actuality. Now, tomorrow we will be decoding the 1966 Batman film, of course, the number 66, the 66th floor penthouse on tomorrow's show. I've got most of the clips put together I'm like three quarters of the way through the movie. And it is mind-shattering. Mind-shattering, the amount of disclosure in these comics. Never would have guessed there would have been this level of disclosure. I don't think anyone could deny after I just showed you that comic. The synchronicities compared to the Twin Towers and what happened on Nyla. No one can really deny that at this point. All the way back then, it's like almost like they had the technology. They knew the plan. They're like, we'll build these buildings. Let them stand for 28 years take them down we'll use that to then rule the world we'll crush anyone who comes up with a different currency than we do who doesn't want to play ball in our new world globe order and then we will dominate the world we'll crush everybody and that's what's happened over the past hundred years just shocking okay i'm in the chat now so if you're new to the channel we do q a at the end we try to Save all your questions. And I usually try to answer those uh, as much as I can. And it's okay to copy and paste your question if I'm not seeing it. All right. So, more Trump painting tomorrow. I said we're going to have zero tolerance for... You know, I'm showing you the evidence. Focus on the evidence. Focus on the evidence. You can't just say it's Trump hating. Because I showed you evidence. If you're not going to comment on the evidence and try to convince me that the evidence doesn't point to him, then we're just blocking people at this point. Because we've we've put it we've been too nice. We've been too nice. So I'll put you on timeout at first. I'm not gonna block you yet. But we we don't deal with uh impolite people in our chat anymore you you extend me the same courtesy i extend extend you if i'm being nice to you don't throw insults and daggers come up with a good reasonable polite comment or don't comment at all and state your case it's okay to disagree just state your case instead of just throwing daggers because we don't allow that kind of toxicity on our channel anymore all right what else do we have here All 
right. What else do we have here? You guys have any questions? Anything I missed? Check out the Sandman comics. Thanks, Jen. All right. I got to make this a little bit smaller because I can't see all your comments. All right. That's better. I could see more of your stuff here. All right. Now, yeah, Kane and Bayard. Um, a lot of these comic characters and roles kind of cross over with one another. You know, it's there's nothing set in stone. You know, like some of these characters channel others. Now, it's interesting because after doing all of this research over all the years that we've done this research, right, and all of the feedback from all of you guys, it appears as though Many of these comic characters are reflections of biblical characters. Well, this is amazing. We're going to have a short discussion about that as we close out the show. Because we were talking a little bit about this. I was messaging you guys in the chat before the show. We were talking about how some of these comic characters and identities are, are being portrayed in our culture. For instance, the Incredible Hulk. Now, this one's a little bit looser. But it's a good example of a character, the mild-mannered uh, Bruce Banner, right? And when you make him angry, he turns into the Incredible Hulk. Well, to me, that sounds a lot like the story of Samson. Notice how when the Hulk loses it and starts beating up everybody, turns into the Incredible Hulk, his hair, like, froze out. Now, he didn't have long hair, but it was kind of, it was a lot longer than Bruce Banner's hair, wasn't it? I believe that was kind of indicating, you know, Samson's hair was his strength, wasn't it? So he turns green. Obviously, that's mockery of the red bloodline versus the green serpent bloodline. Because obviously, Samson was of the pure bloodline. So it's more mockery. Now, here's another example. This one's a little bit more strong. Think about Star Wars. Remember... That Luke goes to Yoda's planet. And he has to learn the force from Yoda. Yoda's training him. And what they do is they lift the X-Wing fighter out of the swamp using the force. Remember, Luke couldn't do it at first, could he? Well, there is an ancient ritual, an ancient Egyptian ritual called the Raising of the Jed. D-J-E-D. -E like Jedi. And they raise an obelisk out of the ground. Just like the X-Wing fighter got raised out of the swamp. Now who is Yoda? Well, Yoda is Yod. Y-O-D-H. Yod is a Hebrew letter that means the arm or the force. Now, you can take this a step further. Because Sol uh, Sam uh, Solomon's name, his original name was Jedediah, like Jedi. Jedediah. You can look all this up in the Bible. And he had crystals. This is in the Bible too. Well, his bloodline had crystals. The Israelites. Called Uma and Thuman. Some translate those, that, those to mean light and perfection. And they were in the chest the 12 jewels of the chest of the high priests of ancient Israel. And so, at that point, it is said, now this is where you get into a little bit of conjecture, but some have said that these crystals, Uma and Thuman, could cut through solid stone and could also levitate objects. Just like the Jedi could. With their lightsabers, which were made out of crystals. So you can see that, essentially, many of these stories have biblical roots. Biblical origins. Now, this goes on because we've done studies on the book of Jasher. In which they talk about a suit that's handed down 
through God's bloodline. It's also stolen. And this suit is like a Superman suit. Those who wield it have powers. I might re-upload that decode that we did. It's a really old decode from like five, six years ago. Yes, Uma Thurman was named after the Uma and Tumen. T-H-U-M-M-I-N. They know. And what could she do? In Kill Bill, she had a sword that cut through stone and she levitated. In Kill Bill, she fly across the room and cut through solid objects with her saber. Wow. Now these parallels go on and on and on. I mean, we could talk about this all day long. But suffice it to say, understand that the enemy knows that the Bible is real. He knows that God's real. This is why he wants to be like the Most High. And he depicts all these. And the reason why we talk about this stuff is so that you understand this. The enemy believes too. It says in the Bible, even the enemy believes in Jesus, he just doesn't serve him. So all of this stuff is real. So what should this do? If you're on the fence about, oh, I'm not, I don't want to believe in Jesus. I don't want to believe in God. Well, guess what? The enemy even believes. That's why he's depicting it in all this stuff. You should be running to the arms of Jesus. Literally running. And that's why we do what we do. To show you how the enemy is obsessed with the Most High. And everything that he does and the people that serve him are all part of it as well. So, what else is going on in here? Any decodes on the guy who produced the Marvel movies? No, I haven't looked into those people. I believe those people are like pseudonyms. I don't even think the people who write this stuff are the real people. I think they're just like uh, front men. You know, they're just like who they show us. Because you look at these people... And there's nothing else really to their name other than they produce these films and the writers. And I think they just say that they're there. That's why I don't spend too much time on them. I'm more focused on the work and exposing that. Because that shows everything in plain sight. Now, what other characters that Hollywood has, has presented to us do you guys think represent biblical characters? Someone mentioned the other day Noah, how he's put in a basket. And you said that Noah was a lot like Superman as well. Because Superman, remember, he was put in a basket and sent off to Earth when his planet was destroyed. So it's kind of like the same thing as well. So. Yes, Trump is Superman. He's referred to himself as Superman as well. Didn't he have like a Superman suit underneath or something? I can't remember what happened with that. When he came out of, when he had COVID or whatever. Yeah, so Moses, yes, Moses. Did I say Noah? Might have said Noah, sorry. Now understand that Moses is Noah. Not literally, but the story of the waters. Remember, Noah went through the waters, didn't he? For 40 days and nights. Well, Moses did the same thing. The Red Sea parted and he went through the waters and they were in the wilderness for 40 years what is this about it's about rebirth M noah and then moses passing through the waters of 40 weeks which is the time that a child just stays in the womb and being reborn into christ into a covenant with christ same thing happened with noah and the same thing happened with moses they emerge into a covenant with Christ, didn't they? It's all about rebirth. And then when Christ was born, we're baptized. This is why people, you know, people tell me, you don't need to get baptized. Of course you need to get baptized. It's part of the process. It's the example that's been given to us. First with Noah, then Moses sent away in a basket down the Nile, and then passing through the Red Sea. That was parted. Why would you want to remove something that has a precedent. That Jesus told his followers to do. Bap go baptizing in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Why would you try to like talk yourself out of that? This makes no sense. Which tells me it's some kind of psyop. 
that has been released into our community to basically chip away at people's experience with being born again. Why would you try to not want to do that? It just doesn't make sense to me. It's so simple to do. Why would you try to talk yourself out of it? That's a different spirit entering the body of Christ. And you need to pray about that. So, basically, um, yes, you're baptized in the spirit as well. But Jesus specifically told them to go and baptize, says it in the Bible, in the name of, he said, go and make disciples. I can pull up the scripture. Why would we want to say we don't have to do that? I don't understand that. But anyway, look, it's your journey. I'm not going to argue with anyone. It's your opinion. But I'm just telling you what the Bible says. So, um, you're born again in the spirit. And think about that. When someone baptizes you, it's a special moment. In effect, you become linked to the person who baptized you. You're brought into like the brotherhood of believers, aren't you? And so it, it, it like grafts you in. It's 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 a it's a it's a bonding moment, isn't it? So there's another reason to be baptized instead of just doing it alone by yourself or saying a prayer and saying I'm saved. And so there you go. All right. So what else do we have here? Good question. Good discussion, you guys. Thanks, everybody, for being respectful. All right. All right, you guys. Well, I um, guess we'll be back on here tomorrow. Love each and every one of you. Decode Batman 1966. Take care and be safe, you guys.